Hi, and thank you for watching. Let's look at the Qigong move, looking over the shoulders to cure the five injuries and seven taxations. So first, I'd like to just uh, look at the move and try and understand some of the rationale, the reasons for doing the move itself, some of the theory. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'll give you three uh, useful tips uh, for practicing this particular move. But first, let's look at the move itself. We just have our feet about shoulder width apart. There are several variations on this move. Um, the simplest one is uh, just turning the head. So we stand with our feet shoulder width apart. We put our weight back on our heels, lifting our torso up and setting our shoulders down. Our arms can rest just at our sides. And then we tuck in our chin just a tiny bit to bring the neck and spine into alignment and gradually turn the head first to one side. Coming back. And then turning the other way, looking over the other shoulder. And then gradually coming back into alignment. We can do the same move involving the arms as well. So the torso and neck does the same thing, turning the head, but at the same time, with our hands starting at loose fists at our sides, we open our palms. One hand turns so the palm faces forward. The other palm, bringing it past the ribs, we pray, place that palm behind us. And as we turn, we extend one hand forward, the other hand back. And then we close our hands into loose fists, and then we bring our hands back to our sides by facing front. Doing the same thing the other way, opening the hands, turn through the spine, look over the shoulders. From there, straighten both wrists, close the hands, so curl the fingers into the palm, and then facing front, bring the hands back to our side doing this with breathing as the hands extend out we breathe out closing the hands into loose fists breathing in as we face front once more turning the other way facing front bringing the spine back into alignment again. And eight, close. So a very simple, straightforward move. The name, looking over the shoulder to cure the five injuries and seven taxations. Uh, the, seven the seven taxations in the five injuries are talking about, it's a shorthand for different causes of disease. The five taxations are talking about emotional causes of disease. Uh, strong emotions, too strong or for too long a period of time, will tax the person. So too much anger, too much uh, sadness, too much fright or fear. Um, these are the sort of things that can be an emotional cause for injuries, uh, for causes of disease. There are the five injuries which refer to um, our lifestyle. So getting enough rest, but not getting too much rest, having different activities, but not too much of them. Any one of those things can again, injure different tissues or areas of the body. So the five injuries and seven taxations are talking about different causes of disease, either emotional stresses or lifestyle problems. And of course, the claim of the name of this Qigong move is that this move will help you overcome these kinds of injuries. It's a big claim. Um, it may be true. Uh, you may want to add in a few other things in addition to this, just to, you know, hedge your bets. Um, not a bad idea. But then we want to try and understand, well, why does this move provide that? There's one, well, I'll give you a couple of explanations briefly. One of them that's fairly common is the idea that, oh, well, all the nerve, cranial nerves, all the nerves from the brain coming to innervate the whole body pass through the neck. 
And so if we find the alignment and then balance out all of the uh, uh, tissues and the alignment of the bones uh, through this turning of the neck, then that will benefit the nervous system and that will help us overcome any injuries or diseases that we have. I think this is not a bad explanation for things. I also want to point out that this is a very modern explanation for uh, this move, as in uh, this uh, places our importance and our focus on the centrality of the brain and the nervous system, uh, which uh, may or may not have been the case when this move was being developed. And so I'm not saying it's wrong to look at this as an explanation for how this move is thought to work, but in only looking at it that way, we run the risk of overlooking other important attributes to this particular move. And so uh, the other thing that I want to point out is the rotation that happens through this movement. Obviously, there's a rotation, but turning the neck. But at the same time, we're also turning the torso. So the shoulders turn, the hips will turn. And when they turn, when the hips turn, then what happens through the legs? The legs will go through a rotation because the feet are fixed to the ground and the body is turning. There is also, if we're doing something with the hands, then as the hands turn, there is this rotation that happens through the arms as well. So a rotation through the torso, a rotation through the lower limbs, and a rotation through the upper limbs. I think this is uh, an important part of uh, the logic behind this move. When uh, there's a rotational motion, then the tissues of the body have to sort of move over each other. And so this has an effect on the fascial linings. And so it will remove adhesions and smooth out um, the fascial system. This, I think, is important because I view the channel system as something that's defined by the fascia. So they say classically that the channels are below the skin and in the spaces between the muscles and tendons and bones. So it's not any of those structures, it's the spaces between. And in between those, those spaces in between are defined by the fascia. A rotational motion will allow those channels to move effectively and regulate each other effectively. It's worth keeping in mind that this description of the channels is different than it's not like cell phone towers where they're beaming information through the air to each other. This is actually more like a series of connected waterways that connect each other, which incidentally is uh, the way that these, were, these channels were originally described. And so this rotational motion is one that can help um, uh, regulate and improve the connectivity of the channels. And it's interesting to note that the, all the internal arts do place an importance on this kind of specific rotational motion. So I hope that information is helpful. And so when I focus on this move, where my intent goes is to paying attention to this sort of rotational motion. So the three tips uh, to help you with this move, the first one is to try and keep the body upright. If we end up uh, slouching or collapsing at the chest, then when we turn, what we end up doing with the upper part of the spine and the vertebrae is that it ends up swaying more than doing a rotation. And so the more that we can keep the body upright, weight over the heels, lift the sternum, tuck in the chin, then there's a rotation that happens um, more so than a swaying kind of motion. Uh, the second tip that's sort of related to this is if we're using our arms, when we bring our arm behind us, then make sure that this shoulder does not roll forward. Try and keep the shoulder open. If we're here and we're moving our arm behind us, there's a difference of this position here and this position here. And you can see how that affects also the positioning of the upper spine and the ease or difficulty in providing that nice aligned rotation. So first tip is try and keep the body upright. Second tip, try and keep the shoulder on the backhand 
Try and keep that shoulder open. And the third tip is to turn through the whole body. You could do this move just turning the neck. But the name of the move is look over the shoulder. And the easiest way to do that is to turn the whole body. And as I was saying earlier, this turn through the whole body provides a rotation through the torso, but also extends that rotation through to the legs, the lower limbs. So those are the three tips. I hope this video is helpful for you. Keep training, keep practicing, and take care.